Hi, my name is Nicole. Welcome to my channel, Travel to Money. In this video, I am going to tell you all about Oslo, Norway. I'll let you know a bit about the city, what to pack, and how to find the best deals. If you are new here, I have created this channel to help you learn about how to travel, adventure, and have fun on the road to financial independence. I have traveled the world, paid off a house in Spain, and I'm on a creative journey to financial independence. I believe the road to financial freedom can and should be fun. I hope you'll subscribe and join me on this journey, no matter where you are starting from. As you can probably tell, I am not filming this from Florida. I am currently sitting along one of the fjords on the western side of Norway on my first woofing adventure. Woofing stands for Worldwide Opportunities on Organic Farms. It is a great way to travel the world on a small budget, doing work on organic farms in exchange for free food and accommodation. I talk all about this in a recent video, so be sure to check it out if you want to learn more. The first part of my trip to Norway was a couple of days in the capital city of Oslo. Coming to Norway, I had little to no expectations, which is a great way to travel in my opinion. I didn't know anything about Oslo or Norway, other than watching a couple of YouTube videos about bringing plenty of layers and a raincoat. I've been here for a week now, and I have been stunned by the natural beauty and humbled by the kindness of the people. Before we get into talking about the city itself, let's talk about the budget to get here and how to make the best arrangements. The reason I ended up looking at Norway is because I subscribed to Scott's Cheap Flights. I received an email from them saying that there were round trip tickets from Orlando to Oslo in the $300 range. I had been simultaneously looking at woofing as a way to travel and then began to search the Norway woofing site for availability working on farms in Norway. After reading a few listings, I came upon a listing for the farm I'm sitting at right now. A sweet woman named Astrid owns the farm and welcomes many woofers. After receiving confirmation that she would host my friend and I on the farm, I decided to start getting everything booked. There is a new airline, Norse Airways, that began offering service directly from a few U.S. cities. We ended up booking a direct flight from Fort Lauderdale, Florida to Oslo. The flight time is nine hours. The price including a carry-on bag was about $660 per person round trip. Unfortunately, I had pretty specific travel dates in July without a lot of flexibility. If you have more flexibility in your travel dates, I wouldn't be surprised if you could find flights for a lot less than that. Whenever you book, be sure to use Skyscanner. It's my favorite for flights, and you can find a link in the description. Now, this was going to be a three-week trip with most of our stay being at a farm where we would be working and living for free. I didn't really think much about what the other budget costs would be, but I probably should have looked into that a bit more. Norway is expensive. Very expensive. I was somewhat surprised to learn that Norway is not part of the EU and has its own currency, the kroner. For fast and easy math, 100 kroner is about 10 US dollars. If you want to save a little on the exchange rates and fees, you can order currency from your bank before you leave for Norway. We opted for taking out a little cash from the airport ATM in Oslo, but we only took a little. As it turns out, we've been able to pay with credit or debit card almost everywhere and have only used cash once or twice. Public transport is pretty easy in Oslo. We had to take a few trains to get to our Airbnb, which was a ways outside of the city center. We used an app called Ruder to buy our transport passes. When you buy any transport pass, it is good for the metro, buses, and other forms of public transport. Our Airbnb host was the one who told us which train lines to take. What I wish they would have told us was about something called the Oslo Pass. For tourists, you can purchase either a 24, 48, or 72 hour pass. This pass allows you all forms of public transportation in and around Oslo, and it also gives you 
free access to 30 museums and sites. This is a massive savings if you are going to see just about any of the sites. For example, I bought a Zone 1 pass for public transport and paid about 12 US dollars. I also went to the Nobel Peace Museum in Oslo and that cost about 14 US dollars. For just $45, I could have purchased a 24 hour Oslo pass and those would be included plus all of the other museums and sites for free. Additionally, with the Oslo Pass, you receive discounts at restaurants, entertainment events, and more. Download the app called Oslo Pass to purchase your passes. If each person traveling has their own phone, it would be best to have the tickets purchased on separate devices. If one person purchases multiple tickets, then the travelers always have to be together for entry. Screenshots are not accepted on public transport. Also, if you are a college student, bring your student ID or proof of semester enrollment for discounts nearly everywhere, including for the Oslo Pass. The Oslo Airport is quite a bit outside of the city, so you will need to purchase a separate train ticket that takes you from the airport to the city center. You may purchase this ticket on your phone with the Router app. Don't take fly to get from the airport. That's what we did, and as it turns out, it costs almost twice as much as the other train. I believe we paid almost 20 US dollars for a ticket with fly to get from the airport, but you can get one with the Router or VY app with another train for about 11 US dollars. You may be interested in renting a car, but I looked into it and the prices were outrageous. As far as places to stay, this is where it gets a bit expensive. It was hard to find something nice under $150 per night in Oslo. We ended up booking a little Airbnb quite a bit outside of the city for two nights and paid $182 total, which comes to just over $90 per night. Believe it or not, we ended up being really happy that we booked outside of the city. The entire train ride there was stunningly gorgeous. Views of water, mountains, charming houses, and valleys were everywhere. Plus, we had hiking right outside our door. There weren't a ton of food options in the area we were staying, but we did find one amazing spot called Frogner Sederen, which had traditional Norwegian cuisine, located in a town called Holmen Kolvein. This 19th century converted ski lodge is an upscale restaurant, which I highly recommend. You have the option of table service or cafeteria style eating, but the bill for the table service is nearly double and it is the same food. A local told us to order a la carte via the cafeteria style, and if the timing is right, you may be able to steal a spot by a window with a view. We visited multiple times because the food and the views were so incredible. The meals were expensive, but delicious. I would gladly stay outside of the city again. Our Airbnb was basic, but it had everything we needed to be comfortable for a couple of days. And with a great restaurant nearby, we didn't have to do any grocery shopping. When we go back to Oslo for one night next week, we are staying at an Airbnb near the city center. We only have about 18 hours in Oslo, including sleep time, so we wanted to make the most of being in the city. Our total bill for one night Airbnb in the city is $158. So you can see there is definitely a savings if you are willing to get a bit outside of the city. Oslo also has thousands of couch surfing hosts. If you aren't familiar with couch surfing, it is a great way to travel with free accommodation. Hosts are generally passionate about traveling and love their city. If you are comfortable staying in someone else's home, give couch surfing a try for an affordable option. Just remember that if you try couch surfing, it's not a hotel. So you should clean up after yourself and leave the host home nicer than when you arrived. Also, many hosts expect to spend time with you showing you the city. Be mindful of their expectations and be sure to plan time with them in your schedule. Now, when it comes to sightseeing, we didn't really have a plan. Due to some rain, we didn't end up making our way into the city center until around 4 p.m. on the one day we had to explore. The things I'm about to show you, we did from about 4 p.m. until 10 p.m. The nice thing about Norway in July is that the sun comes up around 4 a.m. and doesn't set until around 11 p.m. Even when it's dark, it's not dark. 
So at 9 p.m. you can still enjoy a sun-filled stroll through the city. We were just wandering around looking for a coffee shop when we stumbled upon the Nobel Peace Museum. We didn't realize that they closed at 5 p.m. so we bought a ticket and only ended up with about 30 minutes inside. However, it was fascinating and we learned a lot about the history of the prize, the work of many who have won the Nobel Peace Prize, and I particularly found the section dedicated to refugees and internationally displaced persons important to learn about. From there, we wandered around the harbor, which is full of restaurants, cafes, and museums. Maybe just get there a little earlier in the day if you want to enjoy the museums. From the harbor, we could see Akershus Fortress, which was my favorite place that we visited. We walked around the grounds and learned a lot about the history and the architecture. You can see on the walls how construction took place during different periods, beginning in the Middle Ages with levels being added through the 17th century, each using materials of that time period. Before leaving the city, we strolled more of the streets and stopped for some appetizers and drinks. I would say that food is on the expensive end, but it's also very good. We've enjoyed every meal in Norway up to this point. There are plenty of international items, and if you really want Burger King, McDonald's, or TGI Fridays, you can find these all over the city center. I always recommend trying the local places to eat, but to each his own. Speaking of local cuisine, Norway is known for their hearty soups, excellent seafood, and gamey meat dishes such as moose, reindeer, and goat. It is also worth noting that you can drink the tap water here, which is some of the cleanest in the world. Bring a water bottle with you and refill it anywhere. Now let's talk briefly about what to pack. An easy and important item is a sleeping mask. The sun goes down only briefly, and when it's down, it still can be quite bright. We are visiting in the middle of summer and I wish I had packed warmer clothes. What they say about layers is important. There is a lot of rain here and when the sun is behind the clouds, it can be very cold and wet. However, when the sun comes out, it gets very warm very quickly. Anytime you go out for the day, you should be prepared with layers and also a small bag to hold any layers you don't want to wear. The people in Oslo dress nicely and much like the rest of Europe, going to the grocery store in your PJs or lounge clothes isn't something you're going to see. Speaking of the people, gosh, they're so nice. It's as if no one lives in fear of anything because everyone just does the right thing. No one is going to steal anything from you, hurt you, or take advantage of you. Just a lot of nice, friendly, relational people. Oslo was a surprise to me. If you include the surrounding areas, it might easily be the most beautiful city I visited when it comes to nature. The city itself is pretty modern, but flowers are in bloom everywhere in July, and they put them on display like nowhere I've ever seen. Although beautiful, Oslo is not what I would call a budget destination at all. It is probably the most expensive city I've visited outside of the U.S. However, with options like couch surfing or woofing, I think you can easily make it an affordable visit. Even though I'm sure it's not like this year round, in my mind, Oslo is the city in bloom truly breathtaking. Soon I'll be making more videos about traveling throughout Norway and my first woofing experience on this farm in Norway. If you have enjoyed this video, I hope you'll like it and subscribe to join me every Sunday where travel and adventure build financial freedom. I can't wait to see where your dreams will take you.